RL 102 Basic Russian Grammar Part 1 Основы грамматики русского языка, часть первая. With Victor D. Hooliganov. Copyright www.hooliganov.com 2007 Hello. Welcome to Canada. I wish I could show you outside the Montreal skyline behind me from this window. Uh, but uh, this camera is not got very good uh, at dealing with the white balance. So when I do put it out of window behind it, point to Montreal skyline, I am basically not getting a very good effect. Uh, I will have to use this camera, this other camera of mine, and show you what is behind. but unfortunately I can't do the thing they like to do in television where you're reporting with some nice things going on in the background anyway I've got this white window which hopefully will be good here on the uh, what you see as the right side of me uh, will be good to put the text in it so I will carry on uh, as before it is also remembrance time so I'm wearing poopy uh, here uh, to remember everybody what in past times have given life on battlefield so that we could be free in particular uh, is important to remember glorious contribution of uh, red army in freeing europe in uh, 1945 and uh, in the years running up to this period we know that at the moment many nations such as estonia and other peoples um, mainly Estonia, I have to say, um, sometimes like to overlook and um, dishonor or remove uh, the places where is honored the um, sacrifice made by Russian soldiers in ridding Europe of fascism. Um, let me tell you that if it had not been for a Red Army and the soldiers in that time, uh, let us disregard the fact that the Red Army was also misused for many purposes. It is not the fault of those who gave their lives in the fight against uh, Adolf Hitler and his uh, army. Um, uh, those who were fighting Hitler, they basically did uh, the main job of beating Hitler, liberating Europe and producing the free world which we live in today. Okay, although Russians at that time did not benefit from the gift which they actually gave to Western Europe and to the rest of the world. Let us not only remember the war dead uh, from the Western countries on uh, this day of remembrings of uh, war dead, but let us also remember the Russians and their major contribution uh, to the fight against fascism in the earlier part of 20th century. Thank you. Now on to uh, the main thing I want to do today, which is to listen in our uh, uh, Russian course, RL 102, Basic Russian Grammar. You will remember last time we looked at a number of dative pronoun constructions. One of these uh, was Mnie Nravitsa, or TP Nravitsa, uh, meaning I like or you like, where the person who is doing the liking is kicked into the dative. Uh, case Nravitsya means it pleases uh, me. Nravitsya is uh, the uh, infinitive. Nravit. Uh, Nrav itself comes from the word um, morals. Nravi. Um, and Nravitsya is a reflexive verb. It moralizes itself, means it pleases. Yes? If you see the sia ending tacked on as postclitic to any verb, then you know it is a reflexive verb. It means itself. Yes? So um, sometimes you will see if the, if the last element of the verb is a vowel and not a consonant, then instead of sia you see s with the soft sign. S. So for example, somebody likes me. Yes, if you want to say to your friend, do you think she likes me? 
Ты думаешь, что я ей нравлюсь? This literally means Do you think I am pleasing her? That is what it means. So, you can say Я нравлюсь Ты нравишься ей If She likes you. Так? Она нравится тебе. She, you like her. Okay? The opposite way around of what you might think. The person doing the liking in uh, uh, in, in English is the person who is being pleased and therefore in the passive side of it in the Russian construction and is found in the dative case. The thing which is being liked and is therefore in the accusative case if such one existed in most uh, Western languages, including English, which doesn't recognize the accusative case as such in most of the, the, the constructions. Yes, you would say, she likes me, not she likes I. So, me is a, is a direct pronoun ad adjective. The person who is being liked is the person who becomes the subject of the sentence once you put it into Russian. This may seem difficult to understand at first, but because it is a, a way of describing temporary state, it is not out of character with the Russian habit of using impersonal, dative-based constructions. When you come to say, I love her, this is not a temporary state, this is permanent, you love forever, even if you have to die in the process of loving. And there you don't have it where она нравится мне, she appeals to me, I like her. Yeah? You have this time, я люблю ее, I love her. Okay? And this time you are definitely the subject doing the loving, and she is the object of your love. So, remember, for temporary states, in Russian you are usually using impersonal constructions, and for more permanent states, you are using personal constructions. It's easy, once you know how. So, basically, let's look at another one we had last time and analyze it more uh, in detail. Хочется, мне хочется. Хотеть is an irregular verb. And next lesson, we're going to take it through all the different parts. Not this time, because we haven't got enough time in one lesson. So, next lesson we're going to look at хотеть as a whole verb. But, хочется, it wants itself, okay? To, to want, хотеть, хотеться, так? Means to want itself. So, if you feel like something, then that thing wants itself to you, because it's a temporary state, okay? Um, and so, you would say, for example, Мне хочется купить новый чемодан. I would, I feel like going out and buying a new suitcase. Мне хочется купить новый чемодан. If you think it's going to pass in a minute, you're not going to really feel like it in five minutes time. It's a good construction to use. I feel like it. Мне хочется. Мне захотелось in the past tense. Yeah, I felt like. Мне захотелось купить новый чемодан, но потом я передумал. I felt like buying a new suitcase, but later on uh, I change. Past tense of нравится, for example. Она мне понравилась сначала, но я уже думаю иначе. She, she appealed to me. I liked her at first, but I think differently now. Yeah? Good job you didn't marry her in the meantime. That's all I can say. Marry in haste, repent and believe. That's what hooliganov say. So, basically, uh, what can I uh, add to this? Мне хочется is a standard expression or мне захотелось which doesn't change much you don't usually use other parts just the third person um, 
singular to produce th this feeling like construction whereas Mravitsa goes through practically all the persons of the conju conjugation of the Vyorp yes, because anybody can can um, uh, appeal to somebody in the way that you like them but usually you don't normally um, feel like them okay so it's it's a different kind of context when you use the Hochitsa мне хочется, мне захотелось, мне нравится, мне понравилось. Okay, these are two expressions which are using reflexives. And you notice again, in the past, захотелось, because you don't have a consonant at the end of the verb. Um, мне понравилось, for example, something, мне понравилось, это окно. I liked that window. Yeah? Мне понравилась эта девушка. Because it's feminine, it has the A the, uh, at the end of the verb in the past tense and it, uh, all for the neuter. Мне понравился этот чемодан. Мне захотелось его купить. Okay? I liked the, the look of that suitcase. I wanted to buy it. So, I think I teach you something new today. And next week, we building on it by going through conjugation. I say week, maybe it will be more than week, but I try to make it quicker now. Um, the conjugation of хотеть because at this stage it is important for you to know this conjugation, very common ver uh, verb uh, to, to uh, know, and it has to be learned individually because it has some elements of first conjugation, 1b, and other elements of second conjugation. So it's a very unusual verb. So until next time, thank you very much and I come back in a minute with the joke. Okay, I'm back with the joke and I pick in the joke at random from bro joke book here. Let's just pick at random here is Yvonne. Для чего блондинка держит лед в холодильнике, чтобы там было холодно? It means why did the blonde keep the ice in her refrigerator? so that it would be cold there. It's the way I'm reading them.